When they closed the coal mines in the south of the Netherlands, the compensation was that Maastricht, would, the south would get compensated for closing of the coal mines, and one of the, one of the compensation measures was that Maastricht, that Maastricht would get a university. It had to choose, an, it had to be innovative. And that's when Maastricht University, from the start, chose to have problem-based learning as a teaching method. So very small scale. Typically the maximum group size um, for tutorial groups is 12 to 15 students. Um, and so the tutorial groups, the problem-based learning tutorial groups, that is the core of the teaching system, not the lectures. And so it's a completely different approach. Yeah. Which, is, which, which, is, which also attracts a lot of young people because they kind of like this idea to be able to sit in a room with 10 fellow students and to discuss instead of leaning back in a lecture hall with 500 other students. Teamwork, um, I think that's also, the, the, most of the work is actually done by the teaching staff before the course starts. It's a very careful process where you try to find the good cases to be discussed in tutorial groups, which lead after discussion to learning goals for the students, they all have to study individual um, and, and get the answers to these learning goals from the literature. So what you need to do is you have to, for a course, you have to really set the goals. What do we want the students to learn in this course? And then work back from the goals to the cases you present to the students. And so that is, and that, that can be done in any field. It is a little bit, it's a bit more difficult in, 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 with subjects like mathematics uh, or calculus. Uh, Master University uh, is working in a number of countries um, where, we, where, we, where we have supported universities to um, in implement partly or totally the problem-based learning method within the universities. Uh, examples are um, Mozambique, Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, so that's where, where people from Master University go and work and train teaching staff in problem-based learning. So that has been going on for a while now. Be persistent. I, 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 I think that should continue. Um, um, at a certain point, it does help if there are some policies uh, at the policy level, some, uh, some changes as well, where they would either um, reward universities for changing to these, uh, uh, sometimes money can do the trick, you give, you invest uh, in those kind of more uh, pro progressive changes, uh, but it takes time, it, 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 it's, it's very, very difficult to, to, make the, to make, that's what I was stressing, it's difficult to change radically, and I also think um, uh, you need, so you need time, um, but it would be nice if, if there is a support system at, at, at policy level uh, where, where you say, well, this is where we want to go, and that you have also the expertise from, you hire the expertise from outside to help in these processes, like we are doing in universities in the world. Massive University, we have people, as I said, working in Mozambique and Indonesia to help with the change process at other universities. But most importantly, it needs to be something that is fundamentally um, uh, supported by all the levels, be it at the ministry, but also the executive boards of universities. Unfortunately, this is most likely going to be a top-down process. What do you mean by quality of education? It might actually mean that for each university, that different measures would be needed. Um, to tailor to their status quo, uh, status quo and how they want to change. I don't think there's a, there's a one-size-fits-all solution. One college may primarily focus on grades, take the students with the highest high school grades, and that's their definition of excellence. Others are more interested in the energy that young people have and how how they, that, that might also be uh, more extracurricular, that they have a passion for politics or a passion for human rights or a passion for um, 
doing work in developing countries. And that, is, that might also be a definition of excellence. So I think that's what, that, that just to give you the, this example, and I think there are many more examples uh, um, in, the, in the whole excellence debate. Uh, what, do, what are you looking for in young people? Uh, and what then do you offer them? 